Howdy folks. So this is just going to be a quick little video. So I woke up this morning and turned my PC on and you know, I've had this machine for quite a while and I'm one of those people who kind of, you kind of get a feel for your computer. You know how long it takes to do things, how long things are supposed to take you. You, you, you kind of get that feeling when, when something goes wrong. So I noticed it took a little bit longer to boot up today than uh, than it normally does. And that kind of got me a little curious because I know I did a bunch of kernel updates and stuff last night. So, you know, it boots and, you know, everything seems to be fine. So I sort of don't think too much of it. I checked the logs, kernel logs, syslog, there's nothing nothing in there. So nothing seems to be wrong. So I open up Chrome and uh, my Chrome has like 20 pinned tabs, which all load immediately upon startup. So I, uh, you know, normally they load very, very quickly because a lot of them are actually for internal like web interfaces for my servers and stuff. So they load instantly over the land, but all of the tabs are just sitting there waiting for server, waiting for server. And eventually they all load and, and you know, and nothing's, nothing's wrong there, but like the delay is kind of ridiculous and it's not just, you know, it's not just uh, remote services, it's, it's everything. And I check my router and there's no issues there. So, I mean, that wouldn't cause issues because some of the stuff just goes straight through a switch. So I'm thinking, you know, what is going on here? So the, I, I run ifconfig and uh, I have on all of my machines, including my workstation, I have uh, two network interfaces that are bonded together. So in this case, um, these two ports on this side here, they're bonded together. So there's ETH0 and ETH1, and they create bond zero. So I look at ifconfig, and I know ifconfig's deprecated. I'm supposed to use IPA, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I don't care. So I'm using ifconfig, and you should see equal traffic on both network interfaces because it's round robin, right? That's the way it's configured. It fires one packet on one, another packet on the other, and back and forth like that. And one of the interfaces has like 20 megabytes of traffic on it. The other one has about 200 bytes of traffic on it. So I, I knew immediately what was wrong. Um, and that was that the port on the switch had failed. So all I did was just unplug that cable and move it over one because I had uh, one free port left. Um, and I can do that without bringing down the network because uh, you know it's, it's redundant. It recognizes that you've unplugged it and uh, fails over to the remaining interface. And then it recognizes it when you plug it back in and it's working fine now. Both interfaces work. There's no more latency issues, nothing like that. And this isn't the first time this has happened. In fact, if you look on my switch, I've got um, my basically the connection to my primary switch here. And then I've got my file server has two interfaces aggregated here. And then there's two dead ports. And then the, my, my workstation, which this port over here, port number seven is new. I had to move port five to seven because five died. So, um, you know, port four died about almost a year ago. So this, I'm not, this isn't uh, like a new thing. And, uh, I mean, th this just sort of goes to show, uh, this is sort of why I use link aggregation, why I use bonding. I mean, I use it for performance, but I also use it for failover. Um, the network interface didn't show as being faulty. I mean, the kernel didn't know anything was wrong because, I mean, the switch was still connected. The link was still up, just it wouldn't pass any data. And... I mean, this was a workstation, so it wouldn't have been that bad if I'd only had an inter a single interface which had failed in the same way. But if this was a server, for example, um, it could have been much worse because if I have two interfaces and one of them goes down, the server gets slow. But because of TCP, even though packets get lost, eventually the data gets through. Whereas with a single interface, if that goes down, you've then got to go to the physical server, plug in a keyboard, plug in a monitor, and try and diagnose the problem. Um, whereas with two interfaces, you can still reach the machine, you can still figure out what's going on and then just, you know, realize, oh, let's just, you know, move the port or get another switch. And I will have to get another switch soon. I don't know if this will come up on camera. I did a video about this a long time ago, but there's a big yellow discoloration on the top of this switch because there's two chips in here. And, uh, the one on this side used to have all of the stuff, like it used to have, you know, one through three, four, five, they were all on this side. So uh, this chip gets a hell of a lot hotter than this side. So this is why this side's all discolored. But this is well, this is the first generation of this uh, ASUS switch. And uh, 
I'm going to probably have to replace it when uh, another port fails because I'm I basically have run out of ports here. So uh, that'll be another thing. I mean, it lasted me three, three, no, maybe maybe a little bit more, maybe four years, but uh, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. But yeah, that's that's why I use link aggregation. Um, it's just so that you know I've had I've had things fail. I've had cables fail on me. Because uh, I make my own cables, and uh, I've had them go bad. I've had switches go bad. Never had a NIC go bad because they're all Intel and they're all pretty good. But uh, yeah, that's that's just. I thought I'd just share uh, kind of a practical reason why I use uh, dual LAN on all of my devices. Because I mean, when I can buy a used dual port card for the same cost off eBay as a brand new single port card, it kind of just you know. The cost of the cable, in my opinion, is negligible, so that's why I just put dual LAN on everything. So, anyway, hopefully that was interesting. Thanks for watching.